I'd like to start showing some picture uh, to make you fresh. Uh, this is um, because we are in Israel, so in the real Mediterranean zone, this is a uh, Bermuda grass, so Chinonon dactylon. Uh, Chinonon dactylon is uh, very widely used all over the world, also for forage. It's a nice forage plant uh, in the uh, US, in Australia, in a, in a semi arid area. Uh, we'll see later why. Um, this is a typical bed um, uh, plant in a, in a humid condition. Uh, it's a C4 species. And then I show some nice picture here. Uh, you see the contrast between the, in the winter, autumn, you see still leaf, uh, trees with leaves, but uh, in the area are cl close to Milano, they had uh, already frost. So you see the warm season and the cool season. Yeah? That's the, the great difference between the two types of plants in, you know, in one uh, situation, in one condition. So that's Bermuda, that's a perennial plant, uh, perennial cool season plant. Same picture, the landscape uh, was playing with the plants, so that's a nice, uh, you know, design. And uh, you see here again a grower, turf grower, sod grower. Uh, this is a cool season, and this is a Bermuda. That's the limit. So here are we are in full winter. You see the trees, no leaves. Um, normally, the winter in the transition zone uh, has uh, 90 to 100 days night uh, below zero. So cool, warm season are really dormant, but the cool season can grow every day. This is our experimental area. You see here typical uh, breeding uh, program of uh, warm season. Every square meter is a different variety. This is uh, summer, you see, spring, summer, with the leaves on the plants. And this winter, yeah, that's the variation. You see here the stolons very nicely, yeah? so we have to keep the plants separated to avoid invasion all the time. And then we observe and we look at the plants. And uh, you see here also another test: cool season and warm season, different plants combination. How is situation in a, from the continental to the subcontinental but also Mediterranean area where it's freezing because as I say before two nights around one degrees it's enough to induce the complete dormancy of Bermuda <coughs> so when I see here Bermuda green it means that you never had temperature below five degrees because otherwise Bermuda would be in these conditions. Uh, this dose is a strip of uh, Zoesia, Japonica, also another uh, warm season grass. So you see that uh, warm season can grow in Israel, but also in the north of Italy, climatically. Of course, here can grow 12 months a year. In our area, will grow five months a year. But that doesn't matter with the survival. You see different plots. And you see here the green up. We'll, it's uh, spring, temperature is uh, rising, and we look at the difference between the plots to see if there are genetical variation in the green up. But it seems like there is very limited genetical variation in both induction of uh, dormancy and induction of green up. So Bermuda is very well adapted, very well controlled to avoid critical conditions in the evolution, of course. So it's a matter of few days. That you cannot open a wide population of Bermuda, so there is no variation like in flowering of, I don't know, apricots. You know, you, have a, you can have a range of uh, 50, 60 days eh, in, a, in a ripening. Or, uh, but here, it's a matter of days. This is the genetic variation. Uh, the other species uh, I would like to show 
is this one, which is tall fescue. This is a grower. Uh, growing uh, turf is American, English, so the, this Italian, English, okay, doesn't matter. So you know what I'm talking about. They grow for selling. Mm -hmm. This is a nice canopy of uh, uh, tall fescue in, the, in Austria. This is the tall fescue plant. Here has been used as a single plant, not as a canopy, but so you see they are quite tall plants. You can cut a three centimeter, but it can grow up to 70. One plant, look at here. This is one tall fescue. This is another grower also <coughs> in Austria, so it's uh, in close to Vienna. So you see you can grow in the real continental area. If winter temperature is a minus 20, uh, you have uh, maybe 40 days with snow, and then summer temperature is plus 40, like in the Hungarian uh, plateau and so on. So very, very continental. <coughs> yeah, look at here. This is the harvesting machine. And you see the plants leave very nicely, uh, the structure. Uh, we, it's necessary to know, uh, in, you see uh, bad uh, mowing machine, eh? a lot of damages. Uh, infections can penetrate easily if you have all those damages. <clears throat> it's necessary to uh, know the morphology of those plants because you never see the flowers. So how can you distinguish a plant from a species from another? Only if you know the, the leaves morphology. Otherwise, there is no any other way to distinguish. You don't see yellow, red flowers, even you don't see the flower. So that's the only way. <coughs> so uh, that's a typical tall fescue, huh? which is uh, a, growing, uh, a growing plant in the usage around the world because it's very well adapted to the semi-cold conditions, but also to the very hot and dry. It has a very nice uh, uh, capacity to, uh, to be under a drought stress, severe drought stress, and to recover after the stress, which is a different capacity. And the breeding is uh, getting deeper into the uh, to understanding and screening and selecting. So the last one I would like to show uh, is here. One second. <coughs> it's perennial ryegrass. Which, why? Because perennial ryegrass is the most used grass in the world for turf grass. Uh, because it's fast in germination, we will see soon. It's fast in growth. It's fast in everything. But it's fast in dying also. Uh, it's fast in breeding. It's producing a lot of seed. The seed costs a few, one and a half dollars per kilo. So it's, uh, you know, it's a business. But this is pitium on a perennial rye in the summertime. This is another disease that we show also later. I show first the diseases because this plant is very sensitive to many diseases. So it's widely used for sowing, for overseeding. Here in Israel it's widely used for overseeding. Um, but it's suffering many critical conditions, drought, heat, and disease. This is another disease. And this is a typical uh, uh, variation. Here you can uh, appreciate only the color. Uh, <clears throat> some people like the very dark, uh, especially in the US. Uh, therefore, also here in Israel, also in Spain, but not in Germany or uh, Holland or uh, UK. They like the pale, uh, light green, not the dark one. But because many changes are going ahead in the uh, pesticide, I think uh, the, the light green will come back. 
because if you have a, a strange plant here inside, you can see from very far away. If we have a light green Po annua, for instance, you can recognize from meters and meters. If you have a light green canopy, other plants are more hidden inside. That's the reason why this uh, typical process to go into the very dark and uh, but the reason is another, but I don't tell the reason, but that is a typical, uh, you know, situation of a perennial ryegrass uh, area, uh, plots area. You can see here, appreciate uh, also the density. This is one variety, this is another variety. You can appreciate the density, the color, the leaves, fineness. It is higher, taller, lighter, so different characteristics. <coughs> and here you have the leaf, canopy, and the typical morphological structure of this plant. So this is uh, just to show uh, what is about uh, uh, the species. So we go now uh, back to the, uh, uh, in the heart of our uh, discussion, and we, we move, so we designed, uh, described the plants, try to, uh, the, 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 the characteristics, the adaptation, the varieties uh, world inside the species, <coughs> and now we have to deal th with the climates. <coughs> this is the map we designed for the <coughs> Haifa uh, green power concept we developed in the 2004, 2005 already. Uh, yeah, 10 years. And then uh, the first uh, vision I will, would like to show is the, the, the climate. So where are you climatically? Uh, you have here, we <coughs> divide Europe, and then you are here, in uh, six uh, climatic zones, from the cold continental to the Mediterranean one. But if we go more in detail, and I took the case of France, and then you go in a, in a corner, you may have also climatic variation in a very short distance. And those variations we have to keep in cons into consideration when, when we use the plants. But this is not enough. Because, uh, you know, you can use uh, one mix uh, tall fescue poa in the north, but you use also in Sicily. Those are about around 1,200 kilometers distances and through five different climates. So how, can I, how will I manage this population? On the same way I'm managing here, I will manage in these conditions. Will I look for the same varieties, for the same composition, for the same nutrition plan? Or should I vary dramatically the nutrition plan uh, if I'm working in this area or in, in this other area. That's why when we develop the concept, we try to get deeper into the, you know, uh, into the climatic condition. One example that I would like to, to present is a, is a lawn uh, in a, around the house. You have the sunny area, you have the shaded area. The distance is maybe 10 meters macroclimate, mesoclimate, local climate is the same. But the conditions are completely different in a distance of few meters. You have in one condition uh, uh, you high humidity, low light, high humidity, low temperature. In the other you have strong uh, temperature fluctuation, uh, light intensity and dry. So climatically, in 10 meters, it's completely changed the behavior. If you, um, if you have a, I have a picture somehow, but uh, if you walk around a big park and you pay attention to the, what you put your feet, um, and, you walk, and you walk through the open area and then you go close to the trees, you see the population changing. If you go closer, you recognize different species because you have shadow under the trees, you have dry because the trees are pumping water, so 
And then in the other era, in open, you have different type of plants. Uh, so that's what we, I say is a, how can I call it? It's not even a micro, this, those are international definitions. So microclimate can change in 100 meters in front of a hill, behind the hill, in, a, in front of a forest, behind the trees. But even in a short term distance, like in a stadium, the climate can change. I'm in a, when we were uh, uh, taking care of the stadium of Verona, uh, we measured the soil temperature over time. And in the winter, we found in the mm -hmm. southwest corner, minus seven degrees, and the northeast corner in the sunny, plus five degrees. So 12 degrees difference in 110 meters. That was the difference in, uh, in January in a stadium. So, okay, you say, nothing. No, think to the plants that the same have, has, have to survive with these wide uh, different conditions. And think to the greenkeeper that has to maintain this population with so dramatic uh, differences in, uh, in a few meters even. <coughs> but then TV is coming and uh, wants everything green, so they invented the painting system. That's funny and nice. And, uh, and from far away you see green, and that's enough. I'm not sure that one day I'm uh, we're not sure that they are really playing somebody. No, <laughs> <laughs> everything will be artificial. <laughs> so when we talk about nutrition, uh, for instance, I would say what is February or January? Doesn't say anything season doesn't say anything so we have to match and to cross the local climate condition with the with the time uh, of the season so fast uh, difference bet within between species speed of germination sorry for the Italian this is a translation days after sowing so you see one species is germinating in four or five days another takes 15 days if you put together this one with this one, and it's made everywhere, you think immediately that you observe immediately that this is germinating after five days and growing fast, and this one is arriving a week later, and, the, and this small seed, because this is a big seed, 500 seeds per gram, this is a small seed, 3,000 seeds per gram. So when the first leaf is coming out, is finding a forest of five centimeters above, so no light penetration, difficulties in establishment, slows in growth, and so on. Speed in establishment, the weeks after sowing. So one thing is germination, other is establishment means when the canopy is completed, 100% covered. So you see eight weeks here, eight weeks for Bermuda grass, 25, 30 weeks. So we talk about weeks. Here we have to talk about months. And when you combine different species, the balance is not easy to achieve because you have a very fast establishing and growing plants combined with a very low, slow establishing plant. But this is the real perennial. So this is the insurance for the future. And this is just a temporary plant staying there for two three four years and then disappearing but this is the perennial the real perennial plant this is not perennial although the name but it's not perennial so it shows also why different in uh, establishment i show here um, a growth curve of a typical uh, transition uh, cool season uh, mixture in on five climates so this is the typical B model as I've shown before spring very fast uh, summer stop rest the second spring and which is uh, after summer so in fact for grass we have five seasons we don't have four seasons we have five seasons the native in Australia, in New Zealand, divided the divided in seven seasons a year. I, I divide in five, at least five seasons we have, not four. That's a key for then understanding 
the nutrition management, of course. Because every season has a specific demand of nutrients, quantity and type. It's not neutral to be in this phase. What can I do with nitrogen here? Nothing. Just, just uh, pushing the disease to grow. What can I do with water here? Nothing. I cannot... Uh, either I cool down the root system, which is very hard, because temperature of uh, soil level is rising above uh, 25, 27 degrees. But so I cannot push plant growing. So I, I have to be very careful with the, with the nutrition. And here, what is the plant's demand? And here, what is in terms of nutrients, type, and quantity? This is the same, but in the cold continental. So if I'm in Sweden, or in Russia, or in Ukraine, the real cold continental with uh, May, August growth uh, window, cool season look like warm season. You see, it's a unimodal growth. So you have only one season. In some area, uh, the, the, the summer is very, very short and also very cool. If I'm in Sweden, maybe this is the temperature of uh, July, maybe not every year that's it and then uh, <coughs> September 15 yeah, temperature start dropping and uh, August 15 uh, October 15 can can uh, you can have the first frost uh, every year so the same plants the same cool season have a completely different growth pattern in a different era therefore nutrition is also completely another story if yeah if I am in this blue line or in this one this is the typical continental. This is the cold continental. The cold continental doesn't have the hot summer. This is the continental. So, uh, Hungary, Western uh, Austria, uh, Romania, those uh, Central European area, also United States, a lot of area are, are continental, not cold continental. And you have a summer stop. Very short compared to the blue one, but you have you may temperature may rise up to 40 45 degrees for 10 days it is very dramatic for the plants because the temperature is rising very fast and then dropping again the plants have, have, have to cope with this situation and our i mean uh, support must be there this is the atlantic if you ask to a greenkeeper in uk in england what, what, what is your sowing time my sowing time January 1st, December 31st, every day of the year, because temperature is never below 5, 7 degrees, or rarely, and it's never over 25 degrees, so lonium perennial ray grass I can use every day of the year without any trouble. So you see it's very flat. You have a, 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 I mean a bit of a slow down in the winter time, but not dramatic. The main critical factor here is the light, not the temperature because there is a big lack of light. And against the lack of light, you cannot play too much. <laughs> With the nutrients, you cannot do anything. With the water, of course, no. The only, you can supply extra light. But that's another story. And this is the mild continental, which is a center, uh, I mean, France, uh, Germany, or uh, transition zone uh, upper level which is a uh, summer, but not dramatic summer, and then a uh, strong winter as well, with frost and snow. So the same species in five different conditions. So when we describe uh, the plants, I would like to just summarize. Uh, here, the, this line is the root growth, and the blue line is the uh, quality. We we want to have and this orange light is the growth so so the opposite this is the blue line is the growth and the orange one is the quality so we want to have a quite a stable quality but also in the summertime when is very critical for the cool season grasses when you work with the warm season it's a completely different story it's much easier to have a very nice a constant quality during summertime but it's more difficult to have a constant uh, high quality and canopy dense during winter time or you cannot have at all 
Otherwise, we have to use uh, some uh, different strategies. <clears throat> uh, some uh, distinction between the plants to introduce to the uh, to get into the nutrition issue. A variety and biomass. When we move, we don't think about the biomass. We say, okay, you have to move, to cut, and so on. But if you make also some economics calculations, it makes a difference if your plant is <coughs> producing uh, this growth per year or this one. It's uh, something like 40% uh, uh, difference. So to move 40% less or more in terms of uh, equipments, uh, oil and uh, fuel and uh, workers and so on it's a big difference it's, if you think to a municipality with uh, 60 or 100 hectares it's a make a, a wide difference to move uh, every seven or every 10 or every 15 days if you collect the clipping which is another key factor also is another you, uh, the, the impact is, is very huge um, and therefore we measure the, uh, the biomass produced by the plants and also use as a selection system because quality is not related to the biomass quality is independent so you can have high quality with low biomass production high quality with high biomass production So you see here are some uh, uh, forecasts. In this case, this lolium perenne produces uh, four tons per hectare per year. In this case, more than five. Okay, if I'm producing forage for a diary production, that's okay. But we are not in the same conditions. We have to just to keep green, dense, stable, uh, useful for the purpose uh, is uh, done, not to move because uh, it's growing. Also here you see uh, tall fescue, the difference in, uh, in the biomass production here, which is not that wide as for this species is. It's a poor pretensis. This is a, a typical cool of accumulated fresh clipping of a, a variety A versus a variety B. You see here in a, in a, in a, in a period of the year you have a dramatic uh, variation in the growth pattern which makes difference in the uh, maintenance of the plants <coughs> so um, up to now we uh, we have been discussing about varieties that plants and species but often uh, or all the time they are used as mixtures not one one more so different plants combinations we can have those are the typical plants combination of the cool season grasses. So lolium perenne and poa, ray grass and poa, red fescue, agrostis, red fescue and agrostis. Here we are going from the common loam to the high tech uh, artificial, uh, natural artificial golf. Yeah, they use these species. In the common loams, they use these species. So this is in the cool season area going to from here to here the uh, maintenance demand is dramatically growing in any direction uh, nutrition mowing water uh, disease control soil uh, control soil management this is the typical transition zone so you can use uh, the tall fescue dominated uh, populations but you can also introduce the Bermuda grass with or without overseeding of ne uh, annual or perennial cool season grasses. So you may here build up a population combining uh, winter growing plants with summer growing plants. When you go into the warm season area, you drop into the main Bermuda grass types so Bermuda, Paspalum, uh, Zoesia, Stenotaphrum uh, whatever, many types but they are unimodal uh, summer growing plants 
with almost not, no limit in the high temperature, but very strong limit in the low temperatures. In this case, what is varying is the length of the growth season. So Bermuda, over Alps, is growing two months per year. If you pass over the Alps, you go into Germany, you can grow Bermuda, but June, July, that's it. Below Alps, where I am, it's a five, six months growth cycle, getting a bit longer in the last years. But we say middle of April, beginning of November, that's it. If you go down to South Italy or South Mediterranean areas, like here, the growth season is longer. I would say March 1st, November end, but still is green outside. So it's not growing, but it's green. When in the other area, it's completely dry. So to overcome the lack of growth of Bermuda during winter, doesn't matter if it's green or uh, dry, you need a combination with the cool, with the cool season plants. Otherwise, you, have, uh, you don't have the quality you expect. But you can also have a quality without uh, overseeding. So why have everywhere overseeding? This is a very costly operation and very critical also. And in some cases, also in the warm season area, also this combination is used. The tall fescue can be used also in this area. It has a higher uh, water demand and needs uh, to be irrigated uh, often, more often, uh, but is uh, green, easily green from October to May, troubles from May to October. So the other way around, because of the temperature limitations. So if I put in one chart <coughs> all this consideration and I look to the grass association and I put the six climates, <coughs> I see here the subtropical subcontinental is dominated by the warm season. They cannot go down. The Tall fescue poa are passing from the subtropical to the mild continental, where the other climates are dominated by the cool season grasses. So that's uh, the one picture of the type of combinations as a species. The variety issue is mixing up more the situation because you can have variety resistant, more resistant to the drought, more resistant to the low temperature, to the high temperatures. So that can mix up, again, the situation uh, that makes uh, more complicated, but also interesting from other point of view. So this is uh, to keep as a general view, how are the plants combined around the world when we talk about turf grass. So if you go to the Southern United States, you are either here or here. It's funny because, uh, you know, California in the past was using Bermuda. But then uh, the, the stylized grow was growing. So people were asking for uh, green all over the year. So they moved to Tolfescu Poa. But then they had uh, water limitations, cost rising. They turned back again to Bermuda. And that's happening everywhere now. I mean, this uh, up and down, because uh, this is uh, in some area, if you look, look to Agrostis, and then uh, you talk to a greenkeeper in North Africa, it's getting crazy to keep Agrostis green. But the landscaper from uh, London says, no, 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 we, uh, we want to have Agrostis, because I'm living with Agrostis. It's, uh, it's uh, funny, if you go to uh, the Melbourne, um, the um, uh, Royal Botanic Garden of Melbourne, just at the entrance, there is a nice uh, sentence. I uh, hope uh, nobody will uh, be offended my, by my word, but it's written there to the English. It, it uh, required uh, almost uh, 130 years to understand that Lorium perenne was not adapted to the Melbourne climate. 130. And the, the, the sentence is, we are very proud to tell you that we are now using warm season grasses. Uh, uh, interesting, because the water demand is lower, the maintenance demand is much lower, the disease uh, 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 susceptibility is also lower. 
So you see grass is connected with the culture, with the mentality. So it's moving slowly. One century, I guess it's quite slow, but now water limitation in the urban areas is getting very strong. Therefore, I do expect a lot of uh, shifts and variation in the uh, plant use, and also, of course, in the water management and nutrition management, which are the consequences of the plants. <coughs> so, what are the main factors of variation of a plant's population? The nitrogen is one key factor. I will show some, uh, some uh, data. The water management also, the mowing regime and the wear intensity. Those are the key factors that um, in a stable condition of plants, uh, initial plants population can vary the community, dramatically vary. Uh, okay, skip this picture, it's uh, boring. Sorry. <coughs> I go here. So this is a uh, effect of uh, species and varieties. Um, if you var uh, you use a variety one two partners, variety A, a variety B, you see the difference after two, three years from the initial composition. So the, this bar, in this case, is split in, uh, the system is split in 60-40. This system is split in 50-50. <coughs> and if you use another species, and you have initial same composition, in three years, the plant's population is uh, re the reverse. So the tall face is getting down, and the other species getting up. So does nothing to do with the nutrition, nothing to do with the climate, because it's the same, the water is the same, the variation is driven by the uh, capacity of the species or <coughs> of the variety even to compete with the other partners. So you do expect one end product and you have another one, just because the choice of the species of the varieties was not appropriate. That's one condition, it's happening very often. Eh? Uh, this especially is happening very often. I tell you why, this species is very cheap. So the seed uh, uh, trader, they like to put in the bag to reduce the price. You expect this population because you are in a hot, uh, dry summer, uh, whatever, without irrigation. After three years, this plant is dominating. But this plant does not, cannot stand in a hot and dry condition. So you are, if you have a strange year, your canopy is disappearing in one month. So after four years, you ask, ah, what's happening here? I don't have green anymore. Yeah, but uh, the population was shifting from the expected composition to another, maybe because you had just 10% you know, you wanted to reduce the price, like I put 10% of this very cheap plant inside. You don't see it, eh? you don't see it, doesn't matter. The first year you don't see anything. And the third year you can tell many stories to the end users, ah, so, you know, natural birds or whatever. Those are the main story you listen uh, in the fields. And that if you look to the label on the back, eh, if you have, then you understand what's happening. <coughs> I had a big surprise one year doing a sport field in Italy, and then uh, it was a late sowing. And then uh, after one month, it was June, they called me, oh, come here, something is happening. What's happening? Said, it was Bermuda grass, 100%. I said, come on, how? Uh, we, we asked the, a mix of lolium power, and then we found, uh, so we went to the label, uh, the, 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 the trader, the, the, the the company, seed company, put some Bermuda inside because their tradition was to have Bermuda. But because the sowing was later, Bermuda was dominating, dominating everything. And then we had 100% uh, Bermuda grass. It's a nice situation now, what to do? Uh, they had to start playing, you know, uh, opening uh, day or whatever. Okay, so that's uh, what can do a few amount of seed in one canopy. That's, we have to keep in mind because Grass, as we saw, I, I showed at the beginning, can grow. 
if the season is is uh, nice for these species, these species can grow very fast. When the other cannot, this is a winter species. This is a um, spring species. If the winter is mild, as this year is, this plant can put outside the other one in three four months because one is resting the, the second is growing <coughs> this is the case of nutrition also another key factor in driving either uh, in a was in germany a big salt grower 300 hectares close to munich in a hilly area sandy it's a mild continental condition they grow asparagus everywhere they also turf grass and he was proud to show me the field and he said, look at my Arundinacea tall fescue um, grass. And I say, where is tall fescue here? I don't see any plant. No, no, it was 70% uh, in the mixture. Yes, in the back, but not here. And I asked him about nutrition. He said, no, I'm pushing a lot with nitrogen in the spring, uh, in, the, in the autumn. Yes, perfect. Perfect for the other species like Poa protensis but not for tall fescue because it's more sensitive to the low temperature. So it's getting dormant or getting slowing down earlier. So you see the shift. This is the initial plant population, the three main species. This is without nutrition. This one is getting down. This is the case if you push with fertilizers, with nitrogen, these species, Kentucky bluegrass, poa platensis, is taking over the others. And then maybe this variety is very sensitive to rust. And then one day you have a big surprise. You go into the field, it's the field is brown, yellow, orange. You ask why? Because you say, no, tall fescue is not sensitive to rust. Why have uh, rust? But you have just 40% of tall fescue and 50% is the other plants. So your population is you know, going in completely another direction. That's a second case. And the third one is the water. <clears throat> Here, you can see that uh, this, just with a variation of one variety. Uh, so we have here uh, the same composition. You see how can, without irrigation, be the composition different. Same species, different, same proportion just variety A and B of this component, and this is the variation after three years. The water is making flat the conditions. So here you have like uh, 80, 20, 75, 25. Here you have almost 50, 50. So you do expect this canopy or this one. Uh, and this is another variation with uh, water, so you see, so in time, first year, second year, this plant was just 30% arrived to 70. And this plant is very sensitive to the heat and to the drought. So if you have one week, if the mayor say, this summer, no irrigation, we don't have water. You passed from this to here, to this, your lawn will be destroyed in a few weeks. No way. So, and this is without irrigation, is the opposite. This plant is getting back from 30% to 10% because it's not drought resistant. Can survive a bit in the shadow of the other, taking advantage of the cooling system of these uh, species, but that's it. So when we have, we work with those population, we have to think to all those factors. Otherwise, we try to make it simple, but it's not at all simple. <coughs> and that's the shadow. That's the shadow. You see uh, how fast can this uh, species, which is Festuca ovina, sheep fescue, uh, dominate a canopy under sh tree shadow. Tree shadow is different from house shadow. Tree shadow is very dry because there is no water, or less water. And these plants can go up to 80% of the community. 
in three years. Just because with the same soil, the same irrigation, the same nutrition, the same initial composition, just because the tree shadow, so the light uh, variation. Uh, no, Amir, do another stop, eh? Because I see 